Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, like as always, I've got a lot of gaming related news. And that's including the potential release date of GTA 6 hinted by Rockstar's parent company, Ubisoft increasing developers for Assassin's Creed, Blizzard cancelling PvE mode and much more stuff. So without wasting any time, let's jump into the video. The Bluebird team officially confirmed the release date for its long in-development title, Layers of Fear. The highly technical, psychological horror title is set to launch on PC and Xbox Series X, S and PS5 on June 15th. The studio also confirmed a time-limited demo which will be playable on PC from today till May 22nd. Layers of Fear is an image which will include both 2016 Layers of Fear and 2019 Layers of Fear 2 and all previously released DLCs. This new remade will also have a new concluding chapter titled The Writer. The game has been developed by the Bluebird team and Ashner Studio and they have used Unreal Engine 5 to rebuild the game. The Bluebird team CEO, Pitor Babieno said, with the power of Unreal Engine 5, they have been able to create a game that visually surpasses their previous work and they are excited for new and returning players to jump into this. The studio also revealed the PC system requirements to play the game and you can check it on your screen right now. Shark Mob, the developers of the Battle Royale game Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt officially announced that they will stop further development of the game. The game officially launched from Early Access in April 2022 and over on their blog post, the studio said that they haven't been able to reach the critical mass needed to sustain development, which led them to the decision to stop further development of Blood Hunt. That doesn't mean that the game will disappear. The studio said that the servers for the game will be up as long as the game has an active community, and they are working on finding a solution to sustain the game in the long term. Sharkmob also talked about the final update which will add some sort of in-game player voting system to regularly unlock new things to keep Blood Hunt fresh. After the final update, they will release some patches but those patches will only cover maintenance of the game. The studio also confirmed that they will shut down currency purchasing from September 26 but prior to that, they want to implement a token system that will allow players to earn in-game tokens so they can continue playing and unlocking cosmetics even after the shutdown. Ubisoft is looking to add more developers to work on Assassin's Creed franchise. The studio confirmed that they have got plans to add 800 more developers to Assassin's Creed franchise. It was part of Ubisoft's annual financial report where they confirmed their plans to increase the number of talents working on the Assassin's Creed brand by 40% over the coming years. During the same conference call, CFO Patrick Duguid confirmed that as of now they have got around 2000 talents working on the franchise, which is already a staggering figure. To be fair, Ubisoft does have an enormous lineup of upcoming Assassin's Creed games, but we do have to remember that even at the AAA level, vast majority of games have far fewer developers than the amount Ubisoft is planning for Assassin's Creed alone. CEO Yabes Gulmot said that most of the developers who will be soon added to Assassin's Creed franchise will be pulled from other Ubisoft projects. He said the resources will come from the other games, so it's a reallocation of resources to go to Assassin's Creed to grow the brand big time. It's really in our focus to put more emphasis on our ongoing brands. When NFTs were hot, Ubisoft was one of the first companies that announced that they will be implementing NFTs in their games. After getting the backlash from the fan base, for a while Ubisoft was quiet on NFTs, but I guess they have found a way to piss off gamers again. While we are waiting for the next big Assassin's Creed game, Mirage, the Assassin's Creed NFTs announced have been made by a company named Integral Reality Labs IRL. They are calling this new licensed Assassin's Creed NFTs smart collectibles. Apart from the NFT part, there will also be a physical archaic cube with a little 3D printed figure of Assassin's Creed characters. And then there will be an app that you can download and active the character's quote unquote digital souls and take them on quote unquote journey where they can quote unquote complete achievements, level up your account to earn and unlock items, receipts and loot boxes within the app. So it looks like the microtransaction system that used to piss off players in games will now also piss off players in the real world. No release date 
and no price have been announced yet for these collectibles. While we are talking about Assassin's Creed, there has been a leak related to next installment of the franchise. The famous Assassin's Creed data miner and leaker Jonathan released a video talking about alleged release date of Assassin's Creed Mirage. According to him, the game is set to release later this year on October 12th. He claims that the release date is internally fixed, but they could push it back by few weeks. But if that happens, the new release date won't go beyond November 2023. There have been reports that Ubisoft delayed Mirage twice after initially targeting late 2022 and early 2023 release. So hopefully by the end of this year, we'll get to play the next Assassin's Creed game. Blizzard officially confirmed that they have scrapped their planned co-op PvE hero mode for Overwatch 2. Back in 2019, when the sequel was announced, the studio said the game would include two main components, story mission and hero missions. But during the developer live stream, the studio revealed that they are now using their resources to focus on their live service side of the game and they have made the decision to cut hero missions. Executive producer Jared Nehels said a lot of things on why they have decided to scrap PvE and in short, according to him, the team did work on the PvE and made a lot of progress but to put this stuff into Blizzard quality experience will require a lot of effort and they don't know if they will be able to pull it off or not. They don't know when they will be able to put out the final product. So they had to make a decision, either they keep putting their resources on this and hope they will be able to pull it off in the future or they just scrap it and use the time and effort on the live game. He also said that it is clear that they can't deliver on the original vision for PvE that was shown in 2019 and that's why PvE isn't part of their plan anymore. Obviously the community is furious after this news as it was one of the most requested features and they have asking it for the original title and now it's officially not going to happen. Just recently, CD Projekt Red announced a new framework for their Molasses Floods project series. CDPR has a number of Witcher projects in the pipeline from an open world remake of the original title to an entirely new trilogy. Project series is the code name of one of those upcoming Witcher projects which are in development by the Molasses Flood. About a week ago, CDPR announced that the production of Project Series was rebooted. The process is now completed as it was confirmed by the studio on their regulatory announcements. As part of this new framework for the project, CDPR confirmed to PC Gamer that they have let go 29 members from the project. A representative for the company said because of the project has changed, so is the size of the team working on it. The 29 members who were laid off were from the Molasses Flood team and out of the 29, 21 are from the US and 8 are from Poland. When the studio first announced the project, it had over 60 developers involved. Back in March, CFO Peter Nibelovich said it's better to cut cost early and even restart if needed than to carry on. So maybe this could be part of that cost cutting measure. The Xbox version of Stray could be announced soon. Stray is listed as the most recently rated game by the Entertainment Software Rating Board ESRB, and the formats are listed as Xbox One and Xbox Series. It was spotted by a Twitter user and since it got covered by many news media, the rating page is now removed from the ESRB website. Obviously, Stray was originally released in July 2022 for PS4, PS5 and PC and it looks like soon we'll get the Xbox version as well. When Stray launched for PC, it immediately became publisher Annapurna Interactive's biggest game with over 62 concurrent players. Stray is also the second highest rated game on Steam in 2022. After plenty of teases and several leaks later, officially Warner Bros. Games has announced Mortal Kombat 1. The studio revealed the game with a trailer and confirmed the release date of 19th September 2023. The game is developed by the NetherRealm Studio and the game will release for PS5, Xbox Series Access, Nintendo Switch and PC via Steam and Epic Games Store. Warner Bros. Games said that with Mortal Kombat 1, they will introduce a reborn Mortal Kombat universe that will feature reimagined versions of iconic characters as they have never been seen before. The studio also promises an immersive cinematic narrative story mode that will feature unexpected twists on classic rivalries and original backstories for a wide-ranging cast of legendary fighters. The game will also introduce Cameo Fighters, which is a unique roster of partner characters that can assist during matches, creating expanded gameplay possibilities for players. 
The pre-orders for the game is also live now and if you pre-order any version of Mortal Kombat 1, you will get Shang Sun as in-game playable character. If you order PS5 or Xbox Series Access version, you'll get the chance to play the game in Early Access Vita in August. And if you pre-order the Premium or Collector's Edition, you'll get Early Access to the game beginning on September 14th. In an FAQ, the studio said they've got plans to add cross-play, cross-progression support post-launch. The big news of this week is coming from the parent company of Rockstar Games, as they are hinting on the release date of GTA 6. This week, Take-Two Interactive held the investor earning calls where they gave the hint. The CEO of Take-Two Interactive, Strauss Zelnick, said that the company is expecting to end this fiscal year with net bookings in the range of $5.45 billion to $5.55 billion, up from $5.28 billion last year. But for the next fiscal year, which for Take-Two runs from April 2024 to March 2025, the company is expecting the net bookings to jump over $8 billion. The CEO said, looking at the fiscal 2025, it's a highly anticipated year for our company. He continues and said, for last several years, we have been preparing our business to release an incredibly robust pipeline of projects that we believe will take our company to even greater level of success. He then said, in fiscal 2025, we expect to enter this new era by launching several groundbreaking titles that we believe will set a new standards in our industry, will enable us to achieve our $8 billion in net bookings and over $1 billion in adjusted unrestricted operating cash flow. So if we talk about it, even for Take 2, the number is huge and by far the only game that can achieve this number for the company is obviously the next GTA game. Even after a decade later, GTA 5 is still one of the company's best-selling games. So achieve that number, they have to release something big, something GTA type big. During an interview with GamesIndustry.biz, when Zenlit was asked if the company could reach the target of $1 billion without GTA 6, he didn't reveal anything. He said, we are not talking about specific titles and he thinks it highly achievable. He also said, as you know, we hardly talk about years. But when we do it, it's because we have high degree of confidence. Obviously, GTA 5 made $1 billion within 3 days of its release. And during the earning calls, the company also revealed that as of March 2023, GTA 5 sold out 180 million units. So if we count all the leaks and the hint that Take 2 gave, we could expect GTA 6 to come out between April 2024 to March 2025. This is all the stuff I've got for today's video. Thanks for watching it. Do hit the like button if you liked it and do consider subscribing for more gaming related content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, goodbye.